Welcome to our lecture online and today we're going to talk about the normal distribution. Uh, notice I'm having a little trouble with my voice today because I have a cold but we're going to do our best and see how it works out. Anyway, what we've seen before is we've seen uh, frequency distributions on, uh, for example, uh, the price distribution of a commodity or the number of quantities sold in a given day or in a month or a year for a company or something like that. And usually the distribution looks like this. So what we're doing today is we're taking a normal frequency distribution and turning it into what we call a normal distribution, which means that we're going to have the relative height indicated again. Notice that this would be the average value of whatever the variable x is. And of course, there would be a point in which we have the highest frequency. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into what we call a normalized function where the entire area need to curve is equal to 1. But in other words, the maximum height then, of course, would be much lower than 1. It would be a fraction. And so that way, when we integrate on the curve right here, the area in the need, we get equal to 1. Notice we can have a, a normal distribution like this where the average value is indicated by this number right here. There's a certain value for x. Or we can have it situated in such a way that the average value falls right on the y-axis, the frequency axis, so that we have a negative side and a positive side to our to our uh, curve. The equation here that describes the curve is equal to this equation right here. Now it looks like a complicated equation, but that's okay. This is simply an e to the minus x squared type of function. Notice x minus mu, mu is the average value, is of course that takes the curve and sets it off to the value mu right here, centers on value mu. This right here, when x equals mu, so when that x minus x is equal to 0, then we have e to the 0 power, e to the 0 power is of course 1, which means that the height of this curve right here at the center would be equal to 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi. So let me write that down, that's probably a good thing to know. So the highest point on the normal curve right there would be equal to 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi. Remember that sigma is simply the standard deviation of the distribution. Notice when we come over here that the equation here is e to the minus x squared instead of e to the minus x minus mu quantity squared, which simply means that it now centers it about the vertical axis right there. That's the only difference. The height, again, at this point, the height is still uh, 1 over uh, mu, or I should say sigma, which is standard deviation, times the square root of 2 pi. And again, in both cases, the area underneath is 1. Why do we do that? Why do we have a normal distribution like that? Why do we have it such that the total area equals 1? Because if we do that, we can then use this equation and use this distribution to find the probability of certain events occurring. Again, what we can look here is, what we can look at here is that if we go 1 sigma to the right and to the left, so this is plus 1 sigma and minus 1 sigma, we know that between these two values right here, we have 68.2% or actually it's more like 68.3%, if we round that off correctly, of all the values underneath the curve fall within plus or minus one sigma away from the mean or the average. If we go plus two sigma in either direction, so plus two sigma and minus two sigma in this direction, then we know that 95.3% of all the values, <clears throat> so it's 95 point actually it's more like 95.4 percent of all the values fall between plus and minus two sigma and if you go all the way out to three sigma plus three sigma here and minus three sigma right here minus three sigma then we know that all the values underneath our curve about 99.7 percent of all the values fall between plus and minus three sigma again if the distribution of the values is according to this normal curve and for, large, uh, for large, uh, large quantities of numbers, that is usually the case. For smaller quantities of numbers, they get a little bit skewed to the left or the right, and we'll take a look at those specific cases. But then we handle with, it a, with those a little bit differently. So either way, if we look at a normalized curve like this, or we look at a normalized curve like this, we still have the plus or minus 1, 2, and 3 sigma, indicating what percentage of all the values fall within that range of x values, so to speak. So again, the reason why I want to do this, for example, let's say that I want to find the probability of finding values that are less than plus one sigma, then of course I would be looking for all the values to the left of this line right here. If I look for the probability of the values occurring between plus one sigma and plus two sigma, I look for all the values right here. 
and of course the probability would then be equal to the area underneath the curve from there to there. So that's the key behind making it a normalized curve. That means that the area underneath the curve simply represents the probability of an event occurring. Or for example, what is the probability of an event occurring that is equal to exactly one sigma away from the mean? Again, I can go ahead and calculate a small little thin strip, the area underneath that strip, and that would be the probability. And I'll show you some examples of how to actually do that. What I simply wanted to do here is give you a feel for what these curves look like, what the equations are that drive these curves, of course understand that sigma is equal to standard deviation, and simply indicating that the area in the curve is now set equal to 1, that's what we call a normalized curve, that's what we call a normal distribution, in such a way that any particular area between any two vertical lines underneath the curve simply represents the probability of the event occurring within those particular limits or x, x being the horizontal axis. And so that's simply an introduction to how we look at normal distribution curves, and now we're going to see some examples of how to actually use them. And that's how we do that.